thank you for doing this with me. Like really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing thank this. Thank you video. for inviting me to do this video. So, so they sent us a few questions to talk about because you and I had said that we're going to talk about love and Palestine and being Palestinian and forbidden love and all of that stuff. How is the situation with the visibility of Palestine different now than when we were growing up? And what does it mean for the younger generations as well as the youth that are closest to us? Like in my case, I guess that would be my sister's kids. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay, you can go first. I'm thinking of you with my little brother. But yeah, yeah. I grew up in Saudi Arabia, and then I moved abroad, and I lived in Toronto for a good 10 years. When I grew up, the public figures that we knew of were poets and revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. And those poets and revolutionaries kind of helped me connect with the cause. So I didn't really have a relationship with my identity, with my roots. It was more about being connected to the cause through those public figures yeah. and how it's changed. Like today, I feel that connection is more about identity. Mm -hmm. So the whole like identity kind of transformed from connecting to a cause with connecting to your identity. Yeah. And today, when I look at the youth, like I look at my little brother, who's only 18 years old. And over the past few years, he's super social media savvy too. Yeah. He's on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok, and he connects and he has easy access to all these Palestinian figures, mm -hmm. whether they're Instagram models or they're speakers or they're members of Senate as well. Yeah. And there's a different connection there because it's a different connection in yeah. terms of there's this like, it's more you can relate more mm -hmm. and it's a feeling of closeness. Whereas we didn't have that, or I at least didn't have that when I was growing up because there was always the question of, am I Palestinian enough? Because yeah. I thought, palette, like for me, the identity of Palestine was through one spectrum, although that's kind of the identity of Palestinians is on a wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's, it's different because now you can access people who have the same mindset, lifestyle as you. Yeah. And, you and I see it from my brother's lens, like that identity and your identity as a Palestinian is stronger in that sense because it's not a one size fits all. That, that's funny because for me it was completely different. Um, and not just because, so I'm older than you, I'm, I'm 41, but maybe it's about where we grew up. When I was growing up, this was in Nigeria. And in Nigeria, I don't know if it was the same in Saudi, but every community has its own school. And there's no Palestinian community school. So we went to the Lebanese community school. And there's a huge stigma associated with being Palestinian when you're around Lebanese. I don't know if people knew that we were Palestinian uh, growing up, I have no idea. My mom certainly, like when she speaks Arabic, it's a Lebanese accent, so that wouldn't have given us away. But my dad has a Palestinian slash Jordanian accent because they are similar enough in that way that one could sometimes be mistaken for the other if you didn't know any better. So. Growing up, there was always this idea, you know, although we knew, or at least I did, somewhere, you know, like I had a, an idea, you know, there is this concept, this theory of a place that has something to do with us. But I never really thought about it. It was never coming. I was very far from my family. I didn't see my mom's family until I was about 10 or 11 years old because of the war. Teta, my dad's mom, and uh, my aunt, yeah, they lived in different places, and there came fifty coming and going between us for this idea of Palestine to really solidify. So yeah, I just grew up with this identity, this, this very fluid identity by my an Arab, and we used to spend a lot of time in England as well, and we spoke English more than anything else at home. Yeah. So, we're Arab, English, but where does it so... It wasn't until I got to the Khadij in 2004 that I even felt, and, I, and it, it hurts to, to say, to use this word, but that I felt safe saying that I'm Palestinian. Because everywhere else in the world that I had been, it's, it was a very taboo word, and I just grew up knowing this. I, I, don't, I don't know why I knew this, I just know that I knew it. But now, and it's like you were saying, with, with social media, now it's become a lot easier for people in Palestine, but also Palestinians outside Palestine, to have a platform, to have a forum, to come out and talk about who we are and what we do. Yeah. It's also allowed people who are not Palestinian to learn more about what is happening in, that, in our part of the world, right? Yeah. To, to learn more about the politics and the history without relying on only one source. I feel that that's made it also a lot more comfortable 
to say I'm Palestinian because people are aware now yeah. of it. And when I look at, for example, my niece and nephew who are six and seven, we're making it clear to them that yes, you go to Lebanon all the time, but you are Palestinian. And we are sharing with them things about their background that were never shared with us because now we yeah. can, because they can go online and they can see good things about Palestine. They can see that there are people who appreciate that history and that culture. They don't have to hide it. Yeah. The ability that we have now to talk to different people all over the world about who we are, yeah. we didn't have before. That's so true. It's psychologically, it's not so far anymore. No. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. And I love that my niece and nephew are going to grow up with this knowledge rather than having what for me felt like a gap in their identity. Like, okay, yeah. I know it, but I don't know it. Yeah. It's not, in, it's not kind of embedded within every fiber of your yeah. being. When I came to accept my Palestinian identity, when I came to, to learn more about it, it made me feel whole. Yes. Did you, did you have the same I thing? I felt exactly that. Yeah. It was through a never-ending journey, but at the, ultimately the destination was feeling whole, feeling secure, feeling safe, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And from what you were mentioning, it seems that there were a lot of external and internal hurdles with your connection and relationship to Palestine. Yeah. So what would you say are your milestones, your achievements Ooh. in overcoming these hurdles? And it doesn't necessarily have to do with something specific you have done for Palestine, yeah. but for yourself. When I uh, taught myself uh, Tatriz, and you were actually there when I was teaching yeah. myself. I remember that. Yeah. And that was, I don't even really remember why I, I started. It was, it just, like you were saying, it's a journey, right? A yeah. never ending journey. And it was just the next part of my journey. My inno, Teta, Allah Yerhama, she used to get the thunders all the time. Yeah. Beautiful, gorgeous things that used to be, you know, put on display in different places. And she actually has, well, had a letter from uh, Queen Elizabeth II congratulating her on keeping the Palestinian culture alive. That's beautiful. Isn't it though? Yes. I, I, but I never learned from Teta, because I was a teenager, and I was yeah. in my 20s, and I didn't, at that time, come in, we were living in Lebanon for the most part, and so it was still the, the hiding being Palestinian, it was still not knowing that part and having that gap, so I never learned from Teta. You know, going back to what we were talking about, about the younger generation, my niece and nephew, they actually come to me, they're like, can we help? So I'll give them the needle, obviously very carefully, and they will pull the thread out. You know, And they love doing that, and I love sharing that with yeah. them. That's you have amazing. milestones, you've been to Palestine, right? I have been to Palestine. It's huge. And it's funny because when I think of milestones, I think of, at first, all I knew of Palestine, and it was through the lens of that cause, mm -hmm. but then when it's about discovering my roots and actually understanding that, you know what, my relationship isn't with just an, this something that's disassociated, because I was disassociated yeah. with Palestine. It was through something. Yeah. Whereas it wasn't until I was 18 where I really, really started kind of having a relationship mm -hmm. with my roots, with being Palestinian. Thanks to my dad, I can never forget it. Yeah. I was 18 and he was visiting us and then he was leaving and he was leaving he was saying goodbye to me and I was entering university and I was going to be living alone for the first time and he turns to me and he's like never forget you're Palestinian and usually wow. parents would give you advice like yeah. you know on sex drugs <laughs> alcohol <laughs> finances studies future yeah but my dad was determined to make sure that we never forget our identity so there was this kind of connection that was ever so strong and that was a part of ever, of who I am yeah. at such a young age but then it wasn't until 18 that I started discovering myself through being Palestinian discovering my father discovering my family and that discovery didn't just stop at our family name it didn't just stop at Nablus the city mm -hmm. my father is from it kind of extended out into Palestinian society mm -hmm. what it means to be Palestinian yeah. and what does it read it means so many different things earlier I mentioned it's a wide spectrum of identity I've visited Palestine multiple times and all of the times I went to visit I discovered a different life a different way of being okay. of being Palestinian yeah. through the different interactions and experiences I had with Palestinians but when I have those experiences I have a glimpse into their life mm -hmm. but it's not that I felt guilty but I always left 
I didn't live under the occupation. I okay. didn't live through the hardships. I've experienced it. Yeah. But what does it really mean to be Palestinian? And that made me help me understand there's many things of what it means to be Palestinian. So, so you and I, one of the things that we have in common is we're both very much into you know, energies and, and uh, self-love and coaching and helping people be their best. And this is something, this journey of discovering our Palestinianness it is something that has gotten us to, I suppose, find a, a new aspect of what it means to, to love ourselves as Palestinian women. Has it changed yeah. your idea of what self-love means to you, Ka yeah. Palestinian? As Palestinians, yeah. self-love is rooted in not only love for oneself, love for your community, yeah. love for what's right, love for justice, to speak in your truth. Mm -hmm. We know what needs to be done. You need time out. You need to be true to yourself. Yeah. But really being true I mean, for me as a Palestinian woman is not only love for me and love for my family and love for the cause and love for justice and love for humanity. It's love for being just existing. Yeah. Existing and existing with dignity. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't know if that is, it kind of moves away from full on self love, but I can't think of just love for myself in this context as a Palestinian woman. Maybe if we weren't Palestinian, maybe if it were another uh, cultural identity that, that we were talking about, then it would be a different answer. But yeah, because maybe because we're so, as a community, internationally marginalized, misunderstood, um, self-love does, because I feel the same, like I cannot love myself as Palestinian if I am not doing something to support the Palestinian community, to support Palestinian yeah. Um, history, heritage, culture, to support the Palestinian future, right? Yeah, so you know, yeah. one of the oh, reasons. You said it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. You said Thank it. You. Yeah. Good. You know, one of that. the reasons that I, I want my niece and nephew to know is because you know, I want our history. I want our the, the beauty of what it means to be Palestinian. I don't want it to die. I, I want it to continue living and it will live you know, through me, through you, but through them as well. So the more we educate our communities, the more we bring them into what it means. Yes, this does contribute to self-love because I couldn't yeah. love myself if I weren't doing that. Absolutely. And because you love yourself, you're doing that uh, as well. Exactly. And so, yes, there is that feeling of now I'm finally whole, that I have owned, like you say, because this is a big thing, you have to own who you are. Yes. Right? So, Not yes. self love right there. It is. You and I, when we were first talking about this, um, we came to the conclusion that loving uh, Palestine and, and loving ourselves by, by you know, relative to, to loving Palestine was almost like a forbidden love. Yeah. Because we had to overcome so much. Like work in, in progress. Our, yeah, yeah, exactly. And did you ever share how that felt with anyone? Did you ever, maybe your, your father, your brother, just share with them any of your vulnerabilities about being Palestinian? I wouldn't say I shared it directly with my father or my brothers or my mom or my family members. Mm. So how I experienced that forbidden love was for the first time I ever visited Lebanon, actually. I was visiting my friend who's originally Palestinian. Okay. And I'm half Syrian as well, by the way. <laughs> so she's like, do not say you're Palestinian. Do not say you're Syrian. Just say you are Jordanian. So Jordanian, like, mm. That's like a completely different country. Yeah. So that was the first time I experienced like a what, why. Yeah. And then there were other moments where I want to post something on Instagram that has to do with my family's history, my dad's history, my grandfather's passport with the Hebrew written on it, mm -hmm. where it still says British mandate of Palestine. I eventually posted it anyways. But my dad used to always kind of panic, you know? Like So there was the aspect of identity, don't say you're Palestinian, but then there's the other aspect of don't share. Yeah. Don't share with the world because you don't know how this is going to come back to us. Yeah. So I was, there was always like, don't share this piece, don't share that piece, don't share that reality. Mm -hmm. It's like hiding a part of our identity. But it was those moments of yeah. me having to hide my very existence, my view, who mm -hmm. I am, who my family is. That was the only time it felt quite forbidden. So then I went the opposite. I share, I share my vulnerabilities with strangers. Mm -hmm. I'm very vocal. I mean, my vulnerabilities I, I never shared with anyone because it just didn't feel safe. You know, so somewhere in the back of my mind, I always knew that this is not a safe thing to, to be bringing out into the open. 
people might not understand and might, I suppose for lack of a better word, try to talk me out of it. Like yeah. if I feel, okay, I'm, I'm vulnerable, must have my greatest vulnerability at one point was my Palestinian identity, right? And, and trying to find the courage to own it. And I love that you keep saying own it because that's really what it is. And I could never share that with anyone because most people that I know would tell me what your friend told you. Just don't tell anyone that you're Palestinian. But I, mean, I yeah. grew up in places that I'm not from. Yeah. And so the, this concept of who am I, identity, home, that, something that I didn't have. So when I owned being Palestinian and it completed, it filled that part of me that had been empty for so long, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna hide this anymore. Yeah. I really like don't care. It's overfilling. Yeah. A little bit. And it goes back to the self-love. How can I love myself if I deny who I am? And how are you going to you love yourself if you don't, you really are. if you're not true to yourself, if you don't tell the truth yeah. about yourself? So no, my vulnerabilities I never shared with anyone because it was not a, a situation then after that sharing that I ever wanted to be in. But the, the forbidden love, like a lot of it was overcoming my fears. A lot of it was learning how to deal with whatever is going to come back at me when I tell people that I'm Palestinian. It doesn't stay hidden anymore, which is actually I like that. comes it to stay hidden anymore. Yeah. I know. How we liberating. Used, we used to feel. hide all the time, right? Yeah. Part of being like the self-love yeah. also comes down to what your values are and understanding what matters the most to you. And what matters the most is, of course, being authentic and living authentically, but most importantly, speaking my truth. Yeah. A lot of us, especially living in the diaspora, we don't have that home, mm -hmm. right? We don't have that one place that we can call home or think of, I want to retire in my home or build a home, like build, start building my house yeah. and whatnot. You carry your home with you. You just take that with you everywhere. I always tell people, you have to realize nobody is ever going to love you as much as you can love you. Yeah. And so you have to learn to love yourself. And once you love yourself, you start caring for yourself. It starts showing physically how you feel on the inside. Starts yeah. showing physically with the choices that you make. Yeah. So there's something you said here, like we love others more than we love ourselves. We think we do. Yeah. You know that's something I also do as well, especially since I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And it's we generally think we do, but what we're offering kind of doesn't really have substance. It yeah. can break easily mm -hmm. because we don't have it in ourselves. Exactly. And that's why even owning the Palestinian identity, yeah. you know, you own it, you want to show the world, you want to kind of always keep that memory ongoing for your nephews and nieces yeah. and for our kids and grandkids. Yeah. And to in order to do that, you embody it. Yeah. You have to embody every part of it. You do. Yeah. You absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. This was great. It Thank was. you.